One of those always popular effects in Houdini is the ever-present spider web. And recently one of Mano's students pointed me to this animation, which is superbly done by a guy called Philip Pavlov. And in the video description he claims that he used grain solver for wires and a pot net for the water drops. So I thought, why not give this a try, but this time using vellum grains. So to build this spider net, what I want to start out with is first building the underlying geometry. So I'm going to drop down a geo node, dive in there, and then using the lapse spiral tool, I'm just going to create a spiral along the Z and X plane with a radius of, I don't know, 0 0.5, giving this maybe eight loops and around 3000 points. So we have this neatly subdivided spiral here. To generate those radial strands of spider silk, I'm just going to drop down a line, just ghost this and at this point in X direction like this, give it a length of 1.22 and move its origin to minus 0 0.61. So it's exactly centered. Then for now, I'll just add a few more points, a hundred, and then I'll wire this into a copy and transform node. And in here, I'm going to rotate this around its Y axis, 18 degrees and then just make 10 copies of this. Let's just press D over the viewport and under guides, let's get rid of the origin nomen. And after we created this spiral and the radial parts of the spider web, let's give those groups, namely a point group, call one spiral and enable all points in this group, copy and paste this over here and call this group radial, wiring in the spiral in the spiral group and the radial lines into the radial group and then merging both by just wiring those in like this here. Let's just enable point display and let's give this more more uniform subdivision by using a resample node set to a length of 0 0.005 units. And then let's use a fuse node to fuse the radial and the spiral parts together using the radial group up here and selecting as a target group the spiral like this. And then let's increase the snap distance until we see that those points crossing the spiral here get fused with those points on the spiral. Bit of trial and error here. I ended up using a value of 0 0.005 like this. So a few errors in here. But that's fine as it's going to look more organic. All right, let's get rid of the point display and create another point group, which we'll call no pin, which will contain all the points of my spider web that will be allowed to move freely. For now, I just want to select them via a bounding region and a bounding sphere in this case, scaling it to a size of 1.2 along each axis like so. So we only have the outermost points that are not in this group. So everything in the no pin group will be allowed to move. Now to build the basic spider web in vellum, I want to use a trick. Typically, you might feel tempted to use vellum here to set up the spider web. However, in our case, I want to rely purely on vellum grains. For that, I'll just drop down and add first and make sure that in my geometry, I delete everything but only keeping the points like this. So I have only points left in my geo here and then dropping down a vellum configure grain. And as you can see, those grains are way too big. So let's scale them down to 0.001. So now they are really tiny. If I zoom in here, you can see them almost invisible when zoomed out. Before wiring this into a vellum solver, I want to make sure that those points on the very edge of my spider web will be pinned. So basically those points that are not in the no pin group here. So those here on the outside, I could do that with an attrib create or an attrib remap. In my case, I'm just going to use a point wrangle, writing a single line of vex in here, just selecting the no pin group. And we want to set this value on everything but the no pin group. So those points outside here. And in here, I want to set the mass to zero. Or what I could do alternatively is use the stopped attribute. And when bringing up Houdini's help, you can see that this attribute here has these four values here. And in this case, I want to fix it in space. So either I could set it to one or to three to also stop its rotation. So something like that. In my case, however, I'll just go by setting the mass to zero which will also stop any animation or simulation on those points. And remember, those are those points not in this group here, so those on the outside. Now what we are left with are those individual grains here. However, they are not connected. So let's connect them together. In this case, using a glue constraint. So I'm diverging here a bit from the typical workflow that you would expect when setting up something like this by, for example, using vellum hair. Gonna enable vellum glue here and set its group type to points. And then let's drag this down here, set the target geometry to be points as well. And you can see some connections forming there, some glue constraints forming there. When I drag this down further here, I'm gonna get to glue search here and I'm gonna increase the constraints per point to maybe five while decreasing the search points also to five and then maybe decreasing the maximum search distance as well. And when preparing this setup, a value of 0 0.022 seemed to work nicely. Also down here, when it comes to the stretch constraints, that means how far those glue connections, which Houdini regards as springs, how stretchy they can behave. So I want to make sure they are very, very stiff by setting this multiplier here to the maximum value. And I want to decrease their rest length scale. So the whole net, the whole spider web has a bit of tension. Also, I want to enable breaking so this net can tear. And I want to make sure that these constraints that I'm creating here have their separate group. So let's call this one, I don't know, net stretch or web 
type stretch and set the breaking threshold to a value of 1000. And to make this web break a bit more organic, more randomly, I want to scale this by an attribute. And Houdini automatically suggests calling this attribute break threshold scale. So let's just go with it. And before our vellum glue here, let's just use an attrib noise, fire that in here, set the attribute to be a float and just paste this break threshold scale here that Houdini suggested. And let's enable a remap ramp here, drag this down a bit. And when preparing the setup, I found scaling this noise down a bit and offsetting it a bit resulted in a good look as well as in the ramp, making this a bit more contrasty by taking this last point here, moving it forward a bit to a position of 0.7 and taking this first point to a position of 0.3 and increasing its value a bit to 0.6. So now we have the scaling factor ranging between 0.6 and 1 called break threshold scale. And down here in the vellum glue, we use that to scale this threshold value here. So it's varying between 1000 and 600. Good so far. Now let's attach a vellum solver down here. And as we're using grains, we need to increase our sub steps. So start it with a value of six and we can decrease our constraint iterations. Not too much in this case because we need them as the glue constraints, the springs are there to shape and hold our spider web together. So 64 iterations in my case worked out really nicely. Let's see what else we got in here. Under the forces, I disabled the wind, but added a bit of velocity damping. In our simulation tab, I increased the cache a bit. So if you have enough RAM, that the whole timeline will be cached. And then I just added a null and wired the constraints into that null. So we can see what happens with the constraints as those will form the basis of our mesh later. So let's just enable a real time toggle, maybe save this, keep our fingers crossed and simulate this. All right, so far it's behaving as I would expect by a spider web, nothing too special. So let's try tearing this up with a stick. The most simple stick we could come up with is a tube. Let's just ghost this here and set its orientation to be along the Z axis. Let's zoom out a bit and let's decrease its radius scale to a rather small 0.04. Also, I want this to be a polygon, have end caps. Let's drag this down a bit. I want this to be 36 columns, so a bit more finely subdivided and be a bit longer, so I'll increase its height. I wanna start my animation of this rod going through this spider web at frame 56. And this is just to give the spider web and simulation enough time to reach a rest state where the constraints are relaxed and the spider web is somewhat still. Now I wanna animate this center of that tube here. So alt clicking on here enables a keyframe or sets a keyframe here. And then I'll just use the handles and in this case, the translational handles to move this thing down and to the side a bit, something like this. And then going to frame 112, waiting until our simulation has cooked so far. Now we're ready. And I'll take this here and just move it up to maybe minus 0.44 and 2.28. Those were values that worked well in my previous attempts. So let's keyframe this again. Alt click on here. So now we set those two keyframes here. If you hold down shift and click on our keyframes here, we can open up the animation editor. And in here, I just want to select those curves and make them linear. So we have no easing in here. So now we should get this animation, just this rod going through there in a linear fashion. To make this collide with our spider web. I can feed this in the collision geometry. So any of those slots here would be fine. Let's feed it up here in the topmost. And then let's rerun this simulation here. And hooray, we tore up this spider web. So that's one part of our setup. The other part are those droplets that are caught in the spider web, those water dew droplets. And again, I want to use grains to simulate those as they look pretty spherical to me. And to generate those grains, let's take this fused geometry here. And over here, let's drop down a scatter node. We're in this fused geo here. Now that scatter node, let's create a bunch of points. Let's go with 4,000 and let's decrease the relaxed iterations. So we have a somewhat random distribution of those dew drops. Next, let's turn this into grains. Grains, again, using the vellum grains constraint, I think it's grain size to 0.005. So a bit bigger than the underlying spider web, but not gigantic. Now I want to randomize these point size and not make them all be the same size here. So I'm going to use an attrib randomize by that into this geo stream here. And I want to randomize the P scale, which is a one dimensional number. And I don't want to set it directly. I just want to multiply the pre-existing value by this random number, this at randomize node generates. You can see my visualization is still messed up because it's expecting to randomize the color. So let's just flip back to the constraints here and then to the at randomize, maybe just yeah, switch the tabs here. And now my visualization is proper again. Let's start in the distribution of those random values using the custom ramp here. And first, what I want to do on all those nodes here in the ramp is set them all to be a B spline or really nice, easily tweakable curves. And then I want to increase 
the amount of smallish values. Want to have a bit of a happy middle ground here and then have a few really large drops, maybe something like this bunch of dewdrops. Let's add a group to those and call those drops should be a point group and every point in here should be in the drops group. Now to attach those drops to our web here, let's use another vellum glue constraint and in here go the merged geo streams. So I'm going to need two merges, one for the geo, one for the constraints of both my vellum geometry that makes up the spider web, those really, really, really tiny grains here and those droplet grains here and their constraint streams respectively. So those all go into the second vellum glue constraint here. Let's not forget this collision source here, the stick that goes through it and all of this goes into the vellum solver here. Neat trick that I just recently learned courtesy of one of Film Academy Ludwigsburg's amazing students is when you press J here you get this needle symbol and you can just join those vellum nodes here by just clicking and dragging on them instead of having to drag and connect three individual streams here. Let's tidy up our network a tiny bit as best as we can. Not sure if this makes more sense, but at least we have less confusing crossings. And I mean, what we could do instead of taking this collision geometry from up here is just take this tube down here and wire it in the final constraint down here, something like this. All right, attaching those dew drops to the spider web happens in this second vellum constraint here. So let's highlight it. Also, let's highlight its handles here and let's drag this down, set this to connect points to points. And we want to connect the drops group. Remember, that's the do drops we just created to our spider web. And for that, let's just use the no pin group. It's everything except the outermost points in the spider web. Let's give him a maximum search distance of one, maximum number to search is four. Constraints per point is one. That's fine. We just want one single constraint per do drop. And for the stretch stiffness, let's increase that a bit to a thousand. Increase the damping ratio, a few clicks, so 0 0.31. While dialing back the rest length scale, I want this drops to be drawn towards the spider web rather strong. So rest length scale of 0.3 worked out for me in my previous attempts at building the setup. I don't want any compression stiffness, but I want this group of constraints to have their separate group, which we're going to call drop stretch. And also we want them to be able to break at a threshold of 10 units. And that should be it so far. Now, if we just simply try and run this simulation, a few things will become apparent to us. So first, when I visualize the solver, I can only see the drops because the net itself is just the underlying constraints here. And actually, I've got a few too many constraints here. My spider web itself will be only the net stretch constraints. So that's the first thing I want to do is I want to use a blast node attached to this null here. And I want to blast away anything but the net stretch. So I'm selecting net stretch and check delete non selected. And then I'm going to add another blast node. Let's move this over here and set this blast node to the vellum solvers geometry output. And in here, I want to delete everything but the drops. So again, selecting the drops and then check non selected. So now in this stream, I'm only getting the drops. And in this stream, I'm only getting the spider web. So let's merge those two again. And now I get my spider web with the drops. And now if I run the simulation, we'll see some ugly things happening. So first, all of these drops will be shaken off or most of them will be shaken off immediately. And then this web here will be jittery, so it won't stabilize. And there are a few ways to cope with that or a few things that we have to take care of to fix this. First, let's fix this shaking of the drops in the beginning. So on the first frames, until these individual drops are somewhat relaxed, their stretch stress is rather big and will break the constraints immediately. So to fix that, I'll head inside the vellum solver here and drop down a vellum constraint property node, wire this up, and I want to selectively only adjust the drop stress here. That's the constraints that hold those individual droplets here to the net, the web. And in here, I want to adjust the breaking threshold. So at frame one, I want to increase this threshold so those drops don't lose their connection when being initially relaxed. So let's set this to something rather high, like 16,000. Alt click in here to keyframe this. And then let's go to frame 24, setting the threshold to 10. Again, that's the initial value we selected when creating those glue constraints. Again, alt clicking in here to keyframe this. And then with a shift click, getting the animation editor. And if we don't see the curve in here. Let's just over this window here, hover with the mouse and press space and H to home in on that curve, selecting it and then again, making sure it's linear like so. All right, so far, let's go back to our geo level here, reset our simulation. Let's zoom out again a bit and simulate again. 
as we can see we are still losing a lot of drops and also this net is still quite jittery. And this actually took me a while to figure out. The main culprit here is that our individual grains do not have the same scale. They do not have the same size. And by default Vellum is set up to assume that every grain has the same size for speed reasons to make the calculations go faster. However, on the SOP version of the Vellum solver, under the advanced tab, there are no options to configure this behavior. They are only exposed in the DOP version of the Vellum solver. So we could either reset up this whole thing in DOPS or just right click on our Vellum solver, go to allow editing of contents and then be brave and dive in there. Quite a nasty network in there. The thing we're interested in lies here. That's this DOP net. And if we go in here again, we can see when we zoom in here, that's our Vellum solver. That's the heart of this whole thing. And here under the advanced tab, when we drag this down here, we can see grain collisions. And in here, in this tab, I want to set up a few things differently. Well, actually, it's not a few things. I just want to make sure that assume uniform radius is unchecked. So back to our geo level here. Let's reset that simulation, maybe save that scene, keep our fingers crossed and re-simulate. And while we are still losing a bunch of those drops at the beginning until the simulation is settled, we can now see we got rid of this jitteriness of that whole net. And yes, I could keep dialing in the breaking threshold in the beginning when we do this first relaxation of the drops that adhere to the net or just break away. I think I'm fine with this. And that's one of the reasons why I timed this tube animation to be so laid so that actually the drops that will break in the beginning will be out of the frame when we start our animation. And overall, I really like this behavior here. And relying purely on vellum grains for this without a hair constraint or any other vellum constraints apart from grains and glue. We can with one single solver simulate the water droplets as well as the spider web. Of course, this has a few downsides. For example, that in the vellum solver, we require a few sub steps and our breaking threshold and our breaking behavior of those individual glue constraints will be dependent on the number of constraint iterations we run here. So with a higher number of constraint iterations, we will see that stretch stress propagate through our spider web more quickly and more strongly. And thus our individual glue constraints will break more easily and quicker. So this setup is quite finicky when it comes to dialing in the parameters, but with the parameters we set up here, I think that should form a good basis onto which you can expand and work with. So that is my slightly unconventional take on building a spider web with droplets in Houdini. In this case, just using vellum grains. And if you're intrigued about vellum, Houdini in general, maybe even Unreal, or plainly want to support us, you might want to consider becoming a patron of ours. And not only will you gain access to more in-depth courses on those topics, but also you're going to support us on our journey in making tutorials. And to everyone who's already supporting us, thanks so much. It is through your support that Entagma is possible. And a very, very special thank you goes out to important looking pirates, Sean Edwards, Chris Abair, and Rafika Nadol. Thanks so much, folks. So until next time, as always, it's cheers and goodbye.